What is going on, Alpha Males? Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about what it means to be a man the right way, strong, made in the image of God, and don't apologize, making godly men strong, and making strong men godly. So, today's episode... I think goes back to the core tenets of the Alpha Male podcast and why it was started. I know a lot of times we get off on tangents and talk about tactical stuff and all kinds of things. But this podcast was started as a men's ministry by God's grace to provide knowledge and a strong Christian role model for men. Today's original episode, I was wanting to do an episode on Neo pioneering or neo homesteading or neo hunter gathering or something like that, living that lifestyle, which, if you don't know, is a lifestyle I'm blessed to live. Definitely has its blessings and its challenges. But in doing that and making a mental list in my head, I realized I don't think I've ever done a basic toolkit for men. And how have I missed that? That's something we should have done. Now, my go to tools are a bit different than most. My go-to tools, and yours should be, a Bible. I consider myself first and foremost a servant of God, a follower of Jesus Christ, and a preacher. And as such, a Bible should be all of our starting point. That is the instruction manual for people. Before you use any tool, you have to know what you're doing. And to know what you're doing, instruction, the Bible. That being said, a lot of my professional career as a gunfighter is not really germane to today's topic, so I won't put in the main bio that I normally do. I will say that I was a poor boy growing up in the South, and I did quite a bit of manual labor. My father's a commercial fisherman and his father before him, and obviously I did that growing up. A lot goes into that. Is a lot of other side skills, carpentry, shipbuilding, metalworking. Also growing up as a poor boy in the South, there was a time when I would do manual labor out in the southern summers, you know, pulling weeds, digging, landscaping for, you know, not a lot of money an hour. Also, I have, as part of my professional guiding career, being a professional hunter and guide, I managed a ranch, which, as you can imagine, has a lot of manual labor and different skills that go into that heavy equipment operation, tractors, and things like that. We're not going to get into, but all the smaller stuff too. Again, metalworking, woodworking, fencing, livestock management, all those kind of things. That's a little bit about my bio. I'm thankful to God for everything he's allowed me to do. But let's get into a basic toolkit. Something that's a crossover you'll know that I'm a big fan of. The ultimate man tool is a knife. Now we've done whole episodes on knives. I'm not going to get down a rabbit hole on that but have a knife as a man have a folding pocket knife that's the most common my number one recommendation is a buck 110 slim the buck 110 has been iconic and a piece of male americana for decades the 110 slim i think is a little bit more modern and better it has a pocket clip it is quite a bit thinner so you can carry it in your pocket as opposed to on your belt or the belt pouch which a lot of men don't do now But any, I don't care what it is. And we're not talking strictly about knives, but I generally day-to-day carry a good fixed blade, a small fixed blade knife. That's my EDC. But just a good usable blade is important, right? That, as a man, I think you ought to have that carte blanche, like no excuses. You ought to have a knife on you. And one big enough to be useful, but I don't want to hover on knives long. We've done entire episodes on knives. Now let's move on to the next easy transition, multi-tools, which have a knife. They have a lot of times pliers and a lot of other things. Leatherman, Gerber, SOG are the big ones that I'm aware of. There are certainly other ones, cheaper ones, whatever the Walmart brands are, Ozark Trailer, whatever. But a good multi-tool. And these are handy. They are not a gimmick. When I was... Again, a professional hunter and guide and managed a ranch. When I wasn't actually guiding... When I was out riding fences, mending fences, things like that. I had a multi-tool for good reason. I don't want to have to go all the way back to the barn 
for a specific tool. Now, sometimes there's only one tool that will do, but if I can get it done with a multi-tool, that's great. And a multi-tool will do a lot of things, and it's handy for a lot of things, a lot of quick jobs. A lot of times I just need a screwdriver, and it doesn't have to be precise. It doesn't have to fit properly, and a multi-tool is probably going to have both kinds of the most common screwdrivers, and we'll get into that later. It'll often have a little saw, a pair of pliers, wire cutters, very common tools, and they are great. They're not as good as the tool itself. You know, if I'm cutting a lot of wire, I don't want to have to use a multi-tool. I'd rather have a good wire cutter, but if I have to cut a piece or two to mend a fence, it'll work. Multi-tools, maybe I should do an entire episode on multi-tools. If you guys would like that, let me know. Leave a comment, leave a review. But really, they can be very specific. I had one when I was in the Marine Corps as an assaultman. Part of my job was demolitions, blowing stuff up. I had a very specific multi-tool with a C4 punch and a blasting cap crimper. You can get very specific like that or very just general purpose multi-tools. If you're big into engine mechanics, you might have a different multi-tool than somebody that's big into wilderness kind of survival stuff but multi-tools have their place and they have a lot of the tools on there we're going to talk about today now in this next part if you live in a city in an apartment you've never even say walk barefoot on the grass since you can remember a lot of these tools may not apply to you and i don't want to write men like that off i know a lot of men live in that kind of environment you know southern california or or places like that so these may not apply to you your hoa may not allow you to dig in the ground or whatever. But let's start out with hand tools for earthworking. That's what I'm going to categorize this. Number one is a shovel. Maybe the hand tool for earthworking I've used the most, but a shovel. And there's different kinds of shovels. There's flatheads, there's spades. Now, if you are in this line of work, you do this a lot, you're going to have all of these. But just having a good basic shovel. And if you want a good handy small one, the Cold Steel Spetsnaz shovel, it is a good all-around small handy shovel. I think better than the folding type e-tools. They're simpler. But a good shovel to dig with for any number of reasons. Flatheads are kind of specific. Obviously, snow shovels and things like that. If you live in Michigan or somewhere where you need a snow shovel, just a good all-around rounded in the front shovel big enough to do decent work with again all different kinds of shovels for all different kinds of tasks i've done many a hole and dud many an earthwork in my day but next on that list and very similar is a pick or a pickaxe and the reason you might want this is for a couple of reasons a shovel is good for a lot of things it's often good for soft soil but if you're getting in really rocky soil or dense soil A pickaxe may be a better tool for the job. Also, you may just want to dig a small trench as opposed to a big trench. And if you're digging a small trench to bury a piece of wire or bury a piece of fence or lay some irrigation or something like that, you don't want to have to move more earth than you need to. That's just wasted time and energy. So a pickaxe, I think, is an essential tool in there. Now, you can combine both, often called a fireman's axe. That's actually what I have and carry as I live... uh, nomadically i don't have like a full garage full of tools like i did when i was managing a ranch but i have a pickaxe it's an axe on one side and a pick on the other and that's a good transition an axe hatchets are great hatchets are awesome tomahawks are great and awesome i have quite a bit of experience with tomahawks and using tomahawks and tomahawk throwing and competition and things like that but that's more of a specific tool it's great for wilderness for camp but a full size axe is great and it's great for what it is intended for cutting wood cutting trees doing things like that splitting wood now there's different tools for that mauls and hammers and sledgehammers and things like that i'd say that's outside of the scope of a basic toolkit for earthworking and tree felling and things like that a good axe a good shovel and a good pickaxe and before we get into the next section i just want to say if this is really basic for you you know all this stuff you're a handyman or you just grew up in an era where we did this stuff all the time remember there's a time when you didn't you didn't pop out of your mom's womb knowing the difference between a flathead and a phillips head screwdriver and for some men sadly they may be in their 20s and not know this stuff and we all started somewhere one of the marks of being an alpha male is not making fun of other men and belittling them it's using your strength to make other men stronger Next, a good transition from the axe, since that's partly woodworking, let's get into other parts of 
cutting because you cut with an axe, but a way to make a clean cut is a saw. So I think a basic man and his toolkit should have two kinds of saws. You should have a wood saw and a metal saw. If you don't know, a wood saw has big jagged teeth and a metal saw has very fine small teeth. But these both come in handy for a lot of tasks, but they're very specific and you should probably have one of each. There it's a folding hand saw, which are pretty simple and easy or like a stationary bow hand saw for cutting wood, either one will work. But a good wood saw for a multitude of tasks, and a good metal saw, a hacksaw is the common vernacular for that, for hacking off a piece of metal. Quick tip on this, whether you're sawing wood or metal, once you make your mark, measure twice, cut once, but that's not the tip. Once you make your mark, draw the saw backwards a few times along that mark where you want it to be cut. Generally, a saw is easier to move one way than the other. Draw that saw the easiest way across that mark a few times to make a groove. If you just go straight out and try and cut really hard back and forth on a mark, unless it just doesn't matter where you cut it, you're just trying to cut something in half and it doesn't matter. If you're trying a specific length or specific distance of a piece of wood or metal, mark it and then draw that blade slowly backwards a few times or the easiest way across to make a small groove. That way when you get into cutting faster and faster, you don't move off the mark and just tear up your piece of wood or metal or cut it the wrong size. But a basic wood and metal saw. Again, if you live in a city in an apartment in a HOA, none of this may apply to you, but the next part probably will. Your basic toolkit, hammer and nails. There's all different kinds of nails. Probably have a few different sizes on hand. Anything from a finishing nail to a 10 penny nail to even bigger. But a hammer for driving nails. Your quintessential claw hammer. Yeah, you can get ball peen hammers and stuff if you're into metalworking, but just a good claw hammer, I think, is part of, should be part of every man's toolkit. And a few nails for different things. The only power tool, because we could do a whole episode on power tools I'm going to talk about today. Obviously, there's power tools to do the things that I talked about. Cutting wood, cutting metal, anything from a circular saw to a sawzall. But we're not going to talk about that. I think that's beyond a basic kit. But I think even a basic kit should have a power drill. They're so cheap and easy right now. You can drill a hole by hand, but unless you have to, I wouldn't. Just a good power drill. Even if it's just a cheap plug-in without batteries or anything, just you literally plug it into the wall. They're very affordable, and I think even a basic toolkit can do with a power drill. Obviously, for drilling holes and driving screws and things like that, which is a good segue to our next two things in the toolkit. Screwdrivers. The most common are flathead, which is what it sounds like, and Phillips head. A quick aside, they make very fine weapons if they're the right size and shape and you know how to use them. In fact, I remember... When I went to work for LAPD and we were in the academy learning to write reports, one of the things that we were quoted to write a report on was a man stabbing another man with a screwdriver. And I thought, that's a weird thing to write a report on. And then when I actually hit the streets, I found out, oh, that's a thing. You see, if government legislates that you can't have guns, can't have knives, can't carry them or whatever, people just find something else. And a good flathead screwdriver or a good long Phillips head screwdriver makes a nasty weapon but it's not a weapon it's a tool which is not prohibited to carry that may come in handy for you in your life at some point I hope not the flathead is what it sounds like it has a flat head if you think about this the simplest way to turn a screw is to cut a groove in it and then have a flat piece of metal to fit into that groove and turn it now there's all different sizes of flatheads you should probably have a few If it is the wrong size, you either can't turn it all because it's too big or it's so small you're going to tear up the screw turning it. But for a basic toolkit, a few different sizes, you know, small, medium, large of of flathead screwdrivers. The next most common is Phillips head. I don't know who Philip was, but a Phillips head is basically a cross, like an X. If you look at it from the front, it looks like an X. If you look at the screw, it looks like an X. You put it in there. These are a little bit more specific to the size. And in my experience, if you're trying to do torque one down really hard, they strip easier. You want to make sure that it fits fairly well into the thing you're trying to either screw in or screw out. A few different sizes of Phillips head screwdrivers. Aside from screws, you have bolts. And you have a couple of tools that go into bolts. A crescent wrench is a thing that you get that you can change the size on to turn different 
size bolts. They work okay. I would suggest having one, but you should also have a set of wrenches. Your traditional wrench, when you think of your quintessential wrench, it has an open end and a closed end. Sometimes you can get one end on something, you can't get the other end on something. Different angles and whatnot. But it's basically a square bar that fits whatever size nut you're trying to turn with an opened. Basically, it just looks like a jaw that clamps around that. And the closed end, depending on if it's six sided or an eight sided or a 12 sided or whatever, a bunch. it's basically a round hole with a bunch of little notches cut into it to fit on the bolt or the nut. If we're going super basic, I should explain what a bolt and a nut is. The bolt is just a chunk of metal with threads drilled into, or threads cut into it rather. The head is the top of it. It's usually a six-sided head. Sometimes there are four or any number of things, but generally let's say six-sided. And your nut is the thing that goes on the other side. Usually and hopefully the same size as the head. And a washer is the thing that goes in between to either make up space, take up space, or to stop it from pulling through wood or a lock washer to make sure it doesn't wiggle loose. Those are, the, those are the washers, just a flat piece of metal with a cut in them. And the wrench, what we talked about, is the thing that fits on both the bolt head and the nut. I know that was super dry and boring and basic, but some people may not know that. Some men may not know that. There's another way to turn bolts and nuts, and that is a ratchet and sockets. Sockets are basically little tubes with the right size and angles cut into them to fit over a bolt. I don't know if you need these in a basic toolkit. Probably the next thing you get right after a basic toolkit, but they're just another way to turn a nut or a bolt and they work much faster because they ratchet. They'll generally have a little arm on that you turn one way or another so that you can either make something tighter or looser depending on which way you turn it and they ratchet. So you can just put the socket on there of the appropriate size and you can turn it one way or another and then turn it back so it only works one way and then it clicks when you move the other way and it doesn't move the nut or the bolt assuming all the tensions are right now just like calibers and shooting and a bunch of other things the temperature outside it's generally measured in two big ways in metric and standard standard is going to be your measurement generally in inches a half inch is super common for nuts and bolts and automotive stuff. Likewise in metric, like a 10 millimeter is super common. But there's different ways. And if you're getting a set of wrenches, you probably need both because almost certainly you're going to run into some things that are metric and some things that are standard. Even a lot of American cars have metric bolts and things like that. Don't ask me why. But you're going to want a basic set of wrenches in both standard and metric Next, we'll talk about grabbing things, pliers, and vice grips. Pliers, needle nose, as the name implies, are skinny in the front. I think even in a basic toolkit, you ought to have a pair of needle nose pliers and probably a pair of regular pliers that aren't skinny in the front. Even a pair of slip joint pliers gives you a great amount of versatility. Slip joints, they're the ones with the two little holes with the rivet in the middle, and you can get them really small so they touch each other and quite a bit bigger so they don't touch each other. And obviously, that just gives you a much wider range of things you can grasp with them and hold on tight and you're going to use these either for pinching something down really small for let's say grabbing something that's an oblong shape or holding something tightly when you're turning something that's not a standard size bolt or something like that but a pair of pliers needle nose are probably the most versatile but you probably want like i said a needle nose and a pair of slip joint pliers and vice grips you can think of vice grips as kind of a pair of pliers that will hold their shape even when you're not grabbing them. You can use them as kind of a imp impromptu clamp to hold something together, two things together. They basically have a screw on the back and you adjust that to get them to the right size, to the right tension. Then you clamp down and when you want to release it, there's a little paddle on one of the arms that you touch and they release. I think a pair of vice grips belong in a very basic toolkit. And I don't know how basic to make the basic. You probably want a cheap set of Allen wrenches. They're pretty common nowadays, even on like furniture and stuff like that. Even an apartment dweller probably will come across an Allen head every now and then. An Allen, or uh, often called hex, is just a six-sided... Basically, just think of it as a six-sided bar of steel that is bent usually in an L shape, a long end and a short end, and they come in sets again, standard and metric. 
They're generally a few dollars for a set of each. And they are fairly common. There's other stuff like Torx bits and things like that. But they're, I would say, probably outside of a basic toolkit. And there are a ton of other tools out there. But whatever kind of man you are, I was reminded, I think yesterday, day before, on something I was watching, somebody said something about a video game. And I realized that some men actually play video games. I don't even have TV. I forget about TV, let alone video games. But maybe before you buy that next video game, get a basic toolkit, or at least start. Get a few of the tools on the list. If you're a gun guy like me, it maybe if you have you know three Glocks and you know four AR-15s, before you get another one, make sure you have a basic toolkit. Surprisingly, a lot of guys in the tactical world and things like that don't. You would think so, but no, it you know a lot of them don't have those basic toolkits. There's other things that go in the toolkit, you know, duct tape and whatever. I'm just specifically talking about tools right now. But get a cheap toolbox and start putting some of these things in there and using them. That's part of being an alpha male, I think, is having skills and knowing how to do things for yourself and help others. The more you do, the more you'll be confident to do other stuff and the better you'll know how to do things. You know, with the basic toolkit we talked about today, be nice to have power tools but you could make a birdhouse like a quintessential thing you learn in shop class sadly i don't think a lot of schools still teach shop class the basic toolkit i talked about today you can if you have the knowledge change your oil you should need you need new oil and an oil filter but you'll have the tools to do it assuming you don't need an oil filter wrench which is anyway you get the idea I think it's worth doing this episode. I'm sorry if you know all this stuff and it's a little dry to you, but remember, not all men do, and I think it's worth putting out there. If you think this is a message that should be out there to men that don't already know it, I appreciate you listening this long, and I hope that you'll consider supporting the podcast. You can do that by going to goodshepherdtraining.com and going to Patreon that way or just clicking the Patreon link that should be in the show notes. And I just realized before I move on, I forgot something. A tape measure. Tape measure should be... I probably forgot a few things. So if there's something you think should be in a basic toolkit that I didn't mention, contact me at goodshepherdtraining.com or write a review and leave it in there so everybody can see it that looks and help everybody in the community out. But a tape measure, I forgot that. Obviously, you're going to need to measure stuff from time to time. A good tape measure, I think, is something worth having in your basic toolkit. Your tactical tip of the day. Part of your toolkit that you probably almost certainly have and are probably listening to me right now on is your smartphone. Yes, it is part of your basic toolkit, or at least it can be. If you're using an iPhone and maybe Android or whatever, I'm not really sure. It's been a long time since I've had one of those. But you should have a level It's in the same thing as your Compass app, and it works quite well. Keep in mind, you may have to take the cover off of your phone, depending on if your cover's level or not. But your iPhone, the back of it, should be flat, and it is a very nice level. It not only measures two-dimensionally, but it'll measure in all four directions, so you don't have to take the level and turn it 90 degrees. It'll generally measure true flat. So I didn't mention a level in the thing because most smartphones, at least most iPhones that I'm aware of, have a level on there, and it's a very good one. So if you don't have anything for a toolkit, at least you have that. So that's item number one. Just build off of that. That's your tactical tip of the day. The level that is on your iPhone. We talked today about a toolkit, which implies work. Six days you shall work, and on the seventh day you shall rest. And that reminds me of what Jesus said, which is going to be our tactical verse of the day. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a great verse. There is nothing more refreshing for a weary man than the living water of Christ. With that, men, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.